What is up? Fa here from awesome2.com and welcome to another Unreal Engine mini course here on YouTube. I mean, where else could it be? You are on YouTube. This is YouTube. Anyways, before we begin, you always know that I first show you the game that we're going to create. But before we do that, help the algorithm, promote my channel so that we can grow together. Hit that like button. Make sure that you comment, share the video so that others can see and subscribe. That way you're helping me. This is the only thing I'm asking you, okay? So now let's get inside and see the game that we're going to create. If I hit the play button, we have the nice snake over here. It's the snake's head. Now, one thing that we see over here is that the controls of the snake are pretty hard. As you can see, I still cannot get the first food. And the reason for that is because we have one variable inside of our game that is going to allow us to control the snake you see that I just die if I press the restart button we restart and that variable is a delay number and the smaller that number is the faster the snake will be and it will be easier for us to control it as you can see the more we eat the larger the snake gets and the faster the snake will get and that means we will be able to control it much faster as you can see the larger the snake gets I have more control over it because, well, we need to have more control over the snake when the snake gets larger. If you're wondering what's that circle circle in the middle, that dot, I have no idea. It's probably some kind of glitch. It's not part of our game, but it doesn't bother us. Anyways, as you can see, now the snake is much faster and I can control it much better, but I still died. <laughs> we can go back here in the game and we can set this delay from 0.2 to 0.1. So the smaller the delay number is, the faster the snake will be. Pay attention now. The snake is crazy fast as you can see look at the speed of that snake look at the crazy speed of that snake pay attention we also have the score at the top and yeah i can control the snake now very very well oh, very well 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 that is so yeah we have the thousand for the score i am pretty good at this game i'm the best nobody can beat me and yada 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 you saw also when we die the snake plays a short death animation like everything disappears it goes transparent so on and so forth i'm going to die over here and you saw that what i just mentioned anyways this is the game that we are going to create and we are going to learn a lot inside of this game even though it looks small it looks a small game we're going to still learn a lot a lot of cool techniques a lot of things that we're going to implement especially in 2d because unreal engine is mostly for 3d and people don't know and there are not basically no 2d tutorials for unreal engine out there except for some official ones anyways i don't want to blah 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 just make sure that you comment like the video share it and subscribe to the channel and enjoy the course what else can i say see you in the next video or in the next part of this video take care so let's get started and as always you know that we first create or open the unreal engine project browser click here on games and click on next over here, we can have a blank project. That is not a problem. Click on next again. Blueprint, we can leave that because we're going to use primarily blah, 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 blueprints in this project. No starter content. Over here, you are going to select where you are going to store your project. And over here, you are going to name it. So here I'm going to say, well, we cannot begin it with a 2D. So we can say snake 2D. And then I'm going to click on create project. And of course, as always, we need to wait until Unreal Engine takes mercy upon us and, you know, opens the projects and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut out the video right now and I'm going to come back when the, well, project opens. Project. Yeah. So see you in a few. And here we are. I was surprised it opened pretty quickly. Anyways, that is not important. What's important is that we click over here where it says show or hide the source panel. And then over here we have the content. Of course, everything is empty. We don't have anything, but we do have these assets that you can download by clicking the link below this video. So simply download assets and you also have a complete project there as well. So this is what you need to copy. But before that, over here in the content, you're going to right click and click here, show in Explorer. And over here, it is going to open in the Explorer, which is, well, a folder. And it is going to open where your 
content is for this project. Let me just go back over here for the assets now, copy everything you see over here. So copy this, so simply you're going to right click and copy and go back over here and paste it. When you paste it, you will see it in your project and there you go. So we have over here the sprites that we are going to use. We also have here our flip books. Don't worry about that. You can just click them now and open them over here. We will see later on what they are, how to use them, so on and so forth. But what's important is that everything is working and we have everything set up. Now, what we are going to do, first things first, I'm going to right click here and create a new folder and I'm going to call it maps and I'm going to control S to save this current map and in the maps over here, we're simply going to, I don't know, name it gameplay because we're only going to have one map, everything is going to happen over there so you can save it as a gameplay map over here. Now, before we do anything with it, so we are not going to touch anything right now, later on we will do, the first thing that I'm going to do is go over here and again, right click and create a new folder and I'm going to call this bad boy Blueprints. Inside of the Blueprints for folder, we are going to right click and we are going to create a user interface and it's going to be a widget blueprint. And I know this is not what we usually do, but you know, we are going to do it this time. So BP underscore UI HUD. This is how you can call it. You can call it however you wanna call it. You can call it Carl, Kenny, you know, I don't know, whatever, but I'm going to call it BP UI HUD. What's gonna happen here inside of our BP UI HUD? First things first, in our canvas panel over here, I'm going to go on the palette here at the top and we are going to search for a horizontal box. And I'm going to add a horizontal box over here inside of our panel and here you go, this is our horizontal box. What I'm also going to do with the horizontal box is that I'm going to call it score box Next, I'm going to click on it and I am going to click here on the anchors and set the anchor at the top center, so over here. And we are going to reposition it as well. So what we are going to do for the position X is going to be negative 150. Position Y is going to be 32. The size X is going to be 400. And the size Y is going to be 64. There you go, so position X, minus 150, position Y, 32, size X, 400, size Y, 64. As the title suggests, this is a score panel. So what we are going to do with the score panel is that we are going to add a text to it. So over here in the palette, in the search, we are going to filter for text and we don't want the rich text block, but the usual normal text block and put it over here. Now this text block, I am going to call it score title. And what we are going to do with this one is that over here, padding, we're not going to touch that, auto, everything can be as is over here. Over here for the text block, we are not going to leave it like that. Instead, we're going to say score, colon, and space. Also over here for the font, we are going to set it at 44 so that it is a little bit larger, as you can see over here. And also for the color, I'm going to click in over here where it says hex linear, paste 741C00FF. And when you click OK, it's going to well be this color. Now, of course, you can pause the video and see this number over here. So 741C00FF, but it's not important. You don't have to do it the same way I did. It's not mandatory, you know, because I know that a lot of people follow this and they think like they need to have everything as I do. It's not mandatory for you to do that. But if you want, you can pause the video. And again, I, you know, dictated two times the hex color for it. Anyways, moving forward, next we are going to again take a text and put it over here. And this text over here is going to be our score value. For the score value, we are going to set the font size to 44, same as what we did for the score. Over here where it says text block or the text that's inside, we're simply going to say zero. And again, for the hex linear color, paste 741C00FF and click OK. So now this is what we have. As you can see here, score, there you go, at the top, there you go. So we can compile and save this. Now, of course, we are still not done. 
Over here in the palette, what we can do or what we need to do, we are going to filter for a canvas panel. Click on it and drag it over here, not as a child of the score box, but as a child of the canvas panel because this canvas panel over here is going to be our game over panel. And that panel, so the game over panel, what we are going to do with it is we are going to click on it. And over here where it says anchors, I'm going to click on the drop down list over here. For the X, I'm going to leave it at zero. For the Y minimum, it's going to be 0.5. For the maximum of X, I'm going to say one. And the maximum of the Y minimum is going to be 0.5. And you can see now where the anchor is. It's basically here in the middle and it's stretched. So this is our anchor. Again, for the minimum, for the X over here, point or actually for x is zero for y it's 0.5 for the maximum of the x is one and maximum for the y is 0.5 now over here where it says offset left we are going to say 512 for the position y we're going to say 550 so 550 for the offset right we are going to say 400 and for the size y we are going to set that at 598. There you go. So this is going to be our canvas. And purposefully, it is here at the bottom because later on we're going to animate it and move it up. But before we do that, what we are going to do is the following. We are going to, again, go here in the canvas or actually in the palette and search for a text. And apply or drag and drop that text under the game over panel. Now this text is going to be our game over text and we are going to hit enter. Of course, you can compile and save this so that we can save all of these changes. Next, what we are going to do for our game over text is that I am going to select it. And for the anchors, I'm going to leave it at the top left corner. So we're not going to touch anything here for the minimum and the maximum. We are not going to touch anything. The size X is going to be at 100 and the size Y is going to be at 30. But over here in the font, we are going to leave it at Roboto Bold. The size for the font is going to be 90. And where it says text block, we are simply going to say game over like this. And over here for the color and opacity, for the hex linear, I'm going to paste FF and then we have one, two, three, four zeros. So FF zero, 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 zero. And again, FF at the end, which is going to be our red color. What you can do as well over here for our game over for the text, I'm going to select it. And over here we can, you know, like add a few spaces over here or a tab and it looks like this and you can add it all caps. So you can have it all caps as well. So yeah, and again, this is not mandatory. You will not like ruin the game if you don't put the red color uh, and instead you put the blue color or whatever. So I'm just saying that, putting that out there. Anyways, compile and save. Last but not least, take the text again and over here in the game over panel, add that text. And this one is going to be a restart text. For the restart text over here, inside of the anchors, we are going to set the minimum for the Y to be one, maximum for X going to be zero and maximum for the Y is going to be one. Again, over here, minimum for the X is zero. Minimum for the Y is one, maximum for the X is one and maximum for the Y it is one. Over here for the offset on the left side, we're going to leave it at zero. Position Y is going to be negative 80. The offset right is going to be zero. And the size Y is going to be 64. I am also going to set over here, I'm going to leave it the font at Roboto Bold, but the font size is going to be at 50. And over here for our hex linear color, I'm going to paste FFC600 FF. So again, it's FFC six zero zero FF and I'm going to hit okay. 
where it says the text block, we are simply going to say press and over here in quotes, or actually in single quotes, R with capital. And again, single quote and to start a new game. There you go. It's simply going to display this over here. As you can see, press R to start a new game and compile and save that. As you can see, this is with single quotes, so you don't have to do it. I mean, you can again, but it's not mandatory. It will not destroy our game and it will not make it, you know, like better or whatever. Moving forward, let us now animate our game over panel. And in order to do that, we need to select it. And over here, we are going to click on the animation and I clicked over here on the green button in case you didn't notice over here in the animations tab. And now I'm going to select the animation and first rename it. So this is going to be game over animation. And now we need to select this game over animation. And over here in the timeline where it says track, we're going to click on over here and we want the game over panel canvas panel slot. This is what we need. And when you click on that, there you go. So we have the canvas panel slot one. Now, when we click on this bad boy, now over here, when you hover over on the plus button, which is the dark plus button at the right side, you're going to click on this track. And from here, we're going to select the layout data offsets. And there you go. When you click on the plus button over here, we have the left, top, right, bottom, so on and so forth. And automatically, as you can see over here, we have the keyframes for all, all four of these. Now this over here is the timeline or however you want to call it, but basically that's, you know, like the, the track that you can move. And this is the track over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move it here over here on one, which is one second. And for the top over here, we are going to click on the plus button to add a track over here. And for the top, we are going to move it from 550. So 550, we are going to move it over to negative 64. So over here, we are going to add, and let me just type it, minus 64, which is, as you can see, it is going to move the panel at the top. Now, again, over here, only for the top. We are not going to touch the left, the right, the bottom, the so on and so forth. So we are not going to touch any of these. Now, make sure that you compile and save this bad boy. So again, it is only for our top and it goes by clicking here on the animation to create the animation i'm going to remove it when you create the animation so click on the plus button when you create the animation over here for the track you are going to select first things first select this one over here and now select the game over panel canvas panel slot when you select that and from there you're going to click on the plus button over here and you're going to select the layout data or offsets. And of course, for the top, we are going to move it. So there you go. So now we have the animation as you can see over here. So there you go. This is the animation compile and save that. Now, before we proceed, we are also going to do a little bit blueprinting, which is what I call the blueprint programming. So over here, select the restart text. And over here, when you select it over here in the details tab, you have this is variable. So we are going to click on that. So click on is variable and over here for the game over, do the same thing. Click on is variable and for the score value as well, click on is variable. Let me just compile and save that. When you do this, you are enabling these variables or these elements, the text elements, the UI elements to actually be variables. So now we can go here in the graph at the top right corner, as you can see. So over here, when we click on the graph, we're going to go over here. Now we don't need the pre-construct. We do need the construct and we will use the tick as well. Or actually we will create an event for that. But over here in the event construct, what we are going to do is we are going to take the game over text. So we need the game over text and we need the restart text. There you go. And from here, we are going to set visibility. So drag a node from them and click on set visibility. And I'm going to plug in the execution order over here. And I'm also going to plug in the restart text over here as well, which means both of these now are the targets for this. And we are going to set the visibility to hidden, which means they will not be visible. So when we run the game, we are not going to make the game over and the restart text visible. 
Next, over here below that, I'm going to right click and create a custom event. And this custom event is going to be update score. The update score is going to have a parameter, so click on it, and over here for the inputs, click on the plus button, and the parameter over here is going to be score. And instead of Boolean, we are going to make it an integer. So now from here, we're going to take the score value, and I'm just going to move it a little bit down, take the score value and put it over here. From the score value, I'm going to say set text like this, plug in the execution order over here and plug in the score in the text. And of course, it is going to automatically convert this integer to a text and plug it in over here. And this is how we are going to display the score to the user. So this event is going to be used to display the score, as I already said. And last but not least, again, right click and create a custom event. Now this custom event is going to be our game over event like this. And for our game over event, we are going to take our text again. So we can select all of these and we can control C to copy them and then control V to paste them. And I'm going to plug in the execution over here. But this time it's not going to be hidden, but visible. So the visibility is going to be visible, which means we are going to be able to see the game over text and the restart text. And last but not least, we're going to take the game over animation, the one that we have created a moment ago over here. And from the game over animation, we're going to drag a node and we're going to say play animation like this, plug in the execution order over here. And everything is going to be as is. Playback speed is going to be one. The play mode is going to be forward. Over here in animation, game over animation, start at time zero, number of loops to play is going to be one and compile and save that. So this is what we are going to use later on when we create our UI widget, we are going to use it and we are going to first get a reference to it. And then from there, we are going to use these custom events to play the animation when the snake dies, update the score when we have the new score, and of course, hide the text when we start the game. Moving forward, we are going to go back here inside of our gameplay. And I am going to select everything inside of the level. So from atmospheric fog to sphere reflection capture and simply delete all of that. And yes, to all delete everything and we have a dark level. Of course, this is not what we want. So we are going to go here inside of the sprites folder. So this is our sprites folder and I'm going to drag here the background sprite. So I'm going to put that inside and I'm also going to find the gray background and let me just find it here. Here it is. So we have the gray background sprite and we have the background sprite. What we are going to do is select the background sprite for the location X over here inside of the transform, so this bad boy over here, the location X is going to be at zero. And what did I do? I apparently deleted it. So select the background sprite over here. Location is going to be zero for the X. For the Y, it's going to be negative 20. For the Z, it is going to be zero. Rotation, we're not going to touch that, but over here for the scale, we are going to set it to be five, five, five on all three axes. So X, Y, and Z, all three of these, they are going to have that scale. Now, also what I am going to do is here for the sprite color, instead of white, we're going to set over here the hex linear to three, four, five, C, nine, zero, F, F. So again, it's three, four, 5C 90FF. And again, you see it just changes a little bit the color. And again, what I wanted to say is you don't have to have exact the exact same color as I do. But if you want, just pause the video over here, take a look at this hex linear. Again, 345C 90FF. Now moving forward for our gray background sprite. So for the gray background sprite, we are going to set the X at minus 50. This is for the position. The position Y is minus 10. The position Z is going to be minus 50. Rotation, we're not going to touch that. And over here for the scale X is going to be 12. Scale Y is also going to be 12. And last but not least, the scale Z, it is going to be 10. There you go.
Now, also for this bad boy, we are going to click here on the sprite color. And where is that? It's basically right over here in the sprite. So when you click on the sprite color over here, hex linear, I'm going to paste this 422A59CC. So 422A59CC, or simply pause the video and check out for yourself. I'm going to click OK, and this is what we have. So this is going to be our game background. Now, of course, we're still not finished because we do need to add one more thing over here. So I'm going to go over here where it says place actors and search for classes here. And I'm going to filter for the camera. I'm simply going to drag and drop this camera over here. Now, for this camera, we of course need to reposition it. So select the camera. The X position is going to be minus 50. The Y position is going to be 100 and the Z position is going to be also minus 50. So it's minus 50, there you go. And the rotation on the Z axis is going to be negative 90. And this is what our camera sees. If we select the camera, you will see over here when you select it and you click on it over here in the world outliner. This is what the camera sees. But of course, one more thing that we need to do is over here, the projection mode. I'm going to change it from perspective to orthographic and automatically you can see how the preview of the camera over here changed. Now also over here, ortho width, I'm going to say 4,500. And again, you see over here how the camera view changed or what the camera sees has changed. Now, again, I'm not going to like experiment with this. You can see this on your own. What is what this is doing, the ortho width, and you can change from orthographic to perspective to see the difference so that way you can, instead of me explaining what it does, it just changes the view of the camera and the width and so on and so forth. But again, as I said, projection mode, just change it from orthographic to perspective and vice versa, and you will see that. Now we do have one thing that is not working. If I hit the play button, this is what we see. And this is not how we want to see our level. We want to see it as we saw in the preview of our game how the camera is looking at the level so that we can actually see it better. And in order to do that, while we are over here inside of the gameplay tab for the gameplay level, we are going to click here on this blueprints dropdown list. So click on this dropdown list and we're going to click on open level blueprint and it is going to open this over here. We don't need the tick event, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here and go back. So. As you can see, I have a floating window. So I have a floating window of the gameplay level over here. What I'm simply going to do is take the camera actor and place it over here. So from the world outliner, here it is. Simply get the camera, drag it and drop it over here. And now we can, well, dock the gameplay tab again. So now that we have the camera actor, what we are going to do is from it or simply over here, can I do it like this? Set view target with blend. No, I cannot. I need to drag a node from the camera actor over here. I need to say set view target. It's actually, so we need to do this actually from the player controller. So right click over here. We need to say get player controller and from him. So excuse me for this one. From him, we need to say set view target with blend. There you go. So this is where it was. Unreal Engine has so many functions. Sometimes you forget where they are. So over here, the new view target is simply going to be, we're going to plug in over here the camera and everything here, we're going to leave it as is blend time zero, blend function, VT blend linear, blah, 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 blah. Compile and save that. So again, it's from the player controller. So right click and over here, get player controller. This is how you get the player controller. And over here we have from the player controller, you drag a node, you type set view target with blend. And this is going to be, or this is going to set the view on the camera that we have specified. And over here, new view target is the camera actor from the level. So compile and save that again. And if we go back over here in our gameplay and hit the play button, there you go. So this is, this is what we want to see. And this is, well, our desired outcome. So if I hit the play button, now this is our level. So this is how we want to see it with our main camera.
Moving forward, now we are going to start adding elements inside of our game. So over here inside of the blueprints, first we are going to right click and go over here under blueprints. And we're not going to create a blueprint class or none of these except for the enumeration. So click on the enumeration and we're going to call this one food color underscore enum. There you go. So again, it's right click under blueprints and then enumeration. And when you open it over here, what is this? Well, enumeration or enumerators are basic. We can create them how we want to create them. So for example, if we click here on new, you see over here, we're going to click on new and we have a new enumeration and we can give it a name, whichever we want. And we are going to create four of these. So the first enumeration over here is going to be blue. This is what I meant when I said we can create however we want to create them. So we can give them names, whichever we want. So over here, we can say purple for the third one. We can say red and for the last but not least, we can say yellow. And same way you can create, I don't know, like you can create enumerations for Kenny, Carl, Johnny, Bobby, whatever. So you can give them names. And later on inside of our game, we can use these enumerations to compare them with each other to basically check if we have the same item. For example, if the color of our actor is blue or purple or whatever. We can even use this for tags. So you can give them tags over here. We can compare them later on, so on and so forth. So this is for what we are using the enumerations. So the next step, now that we have the enumeration, we are going to go back over here. We're going to right click and this time we are going to create a blueprint class and it's going to inherit from the actor. And we're going to call this bad boy BP food. So we're going to use this to actually create the food. So I'm going to double click this, open it, of course, here in the blueprint editor. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is over here is click on the add component and we are going to filter for Sprite and we want the paper Sprite. So this is what we want, the paper Sprite component. So if I hover over, you will see it's a paper sprite component. See, it's a component that handles rendering and collision for a single instance of a U paper. Basically, this is a component where it will allow us to display an image. And I'm going to make it a default root and I'm going to rename it to food sprite. There you go. So I can compile this and save it. And of course, over here inside, I said, of course, like you knew that was coming. So over here in the variables, we are going to create a score variable. And this is going to be an integer and I am going to make it public and compile and save this bad boy. So this is when it comes to our food sprite. Now, of course, we are still not done. Instead, what we are going to do is we are going to go here in the event graph. And from here, I'm going to remove these two in the event begin play. We are going to create a custom function. So right here below, we are going to get a custom event. And I said function, but it's a custom event. And we're going to call this set food. And from here, actually, first, I'm going to click on it. And what we are going to have here, so click on it. And over here, we're going to have an input, which is a parameter. So we're going to call it type. And from the drop down list over here, we are going to click here. And in the search, we are going to say food and there you go. So we want the food color enum. So this type that we're going to pass here inside of this custom event is going to be the food type enumeration that we just added. Now over here, when we begin the event or when we begin play, we're going to call set food. And let me just find it over here. Where is it? Where is my custom function? Here it is. So set food and we are going to leave it at blue and pay attention over here because we set the type over here of this parameter to be the food color enumeration. You see that we have blue, purple, red, and yellow, which are these over here that we have created. So we can compile and save that. There you go. Now what we are going to do with this set food is that we are going to get our food sprite. So we are going to put it over here, get it because based on the food we are going to, or based on the color of the food, we are going to change the sprites appearance. So from here, I am going to say switch on 
first from here from the type we can say switch and it is going to create a switch on the food color and over here as I said on the food color we have the blue purple red and yellow which are the ones that we have created so I'm not going to go back again because we already know that now from here from the food sprite I'm going to say set sprite and there you go now what I'm also going to do is copy and paste this paste it again and paste it again so you have four of these possibilities when I say possibilities that is we can have the blue color over here we can have the purple color we can have the red color we can have the yellow color also this food sprite goes into every single one of these so make sure that you do that you can move this a little bit away like this so that you can see it more clearly that's up to you and there you go so this food sprite needs to go in every single one of these for the target as you can see because we are targeting that food sprite now that we have our everything is set up so for the switch on the food color we plugged in the food sprite over here when we have the blue one we are going to click here and we're going to select the blue polygon sprite because again as I said if the food if the enum on the food is blue, we are going to set the blue polygon. And this is what I said a moment ago. So over here, based on the switch, on the enumeration food color, it is going to tell us if it's blue, then it's going to execute over here. So if it's blue, it's going to execute this. If it's purple, it's going to execute this. If it's red, this, and so on and so forth. So over here, if it's purple, search for purple. There you go, purple polygon sprite. Over here, we have the red, so type red, and we have the red polygon, not the red square, but the red polygon sprite and last but not least over here we have the yellow so over here we have the yellow polygon sprite there you go now what we are also going to do is we are going to set the scores so over here set score like this copy and paste this bad boy and it is go this goes over here paste it one more time this goes over here and last but not least for our yellow also paste it like this this goes over here come on let us go back there you go so now over here if we have the blue color we're going to set the score to be 100 if we have the purple color we're going to set the score to be 50 if we have the red color we're going to set the score to 20 and last but not least if we have the yellow color we're going to set the score to 10 and we can compile and save this next we are going to wait and delay. So over here, we're going to delay. And we are going to delay for three seconds if is the blue color, copy and paste this, and I'm going to plug it in over here. If it's the purple color, we're going to delay two seconds, and last but not least, if it's the red color, we are going to delay one second. Now, we are not going to delay if we have the yellow color, so we're going to leave it as is compile and save that after we delay what we're going to do well over here now we're going to set the food like this there you go and we're going to set the color to purple and I'm going to copy and paste this and this goes over here and let me just move these a little bit like this and generally move the whole function over here there you go and I say function but it's a custom event but it's basically if not the same thing it's similar and over here we have another set food and this time this is going to be red and last but not least over here we have the food and we are going to set this bad boy to yellow there you go compile and save that so first when we go in the set food we are going to go in the switch and we explain this based on the color we're going to set the sprite of our or the color of our food sprite to that sprite and then we are going to set the appropriate score based on that as well and after that we're going to delay depending on which color we have we're going to delay a certain number of seconds and after that we're going to change the color of the sprite again so simply compile and save this so this is for our BP food now, before we proceed to create the gameplay mechanic, we still need to create a couple of more actors so over here, blueprints. So we are going to create another blueprint and it's going to inherit from the actor. And this one is going to be BP block. There you go. So double click this bad boy, open it over here. And what's gonna happen is we are going to go again under add component and filter for paper sprite. 
and it's paper, there it goes, sprite. So this is what we want. And this one is going to be our block sprite. What I'm going to do with this one is over here for the source of the sprite, we are going to click on the drop down list and we are going to filter for gray square sprite. This is what we want. So this is going to be a sprite that's gonna represent our block. Over here for the location for the Y, we're going to say minus 10 just so that we can move a little bit backwards. And we are not going to touch anything else. So make sure that you compile and save this as well. There you go. Moving forward, the next thing is, let me go back over here and right click blueprint class. And again, it's going to inherit from the actor. And this one is going to be BP underscore snake body part. So there you go. And what I'm going to do is double click this bad boy and open it. So open it over here inside of our editor. Now what's going to happen with the snake body part is that we are going to use a paper flip book. So over here at component, we're going to filter for paper flip book. And what the hell is a paper, paper flip book? First, let me just set it to be the default scene. There you go. So we have our paper flip book. We are not going to add anything over here inside of our source for it. But over here for the variables, you're going to click on the plus button and we are going to say is head. And this one is going to be public. So make sure that you check this I box or this I over here so that we can make it public because of course, we want to, you know, access it later on in other sprites and determine if this is the head or not. Now, what the hell is a paper flip book? Paper flip book in Unreal Engine will allow us to create an animation. And here it is. You see flip books and we already have the bait, the beat flip book and the blank flip book. If I hover over, over here, if I hover over, if I right click, and go to paper 2D, here is where you can create a paper flip book. So it's simply right click, paper 2D, paper flip book. And you can call this one test book, for example, and you can double click on it and it, you can open it here. So what is this? What the hell is this? Let me just open the one that we already had over here, the beat one. There you go, you see? And let me just stop it because it is animating. So this is basically a way inside of Unreal Engine to animate sprites. And the way this works is there are multiple ways how you can create animations like the ones you saw over here. You can go over here and you can right click to add a keyframe. And there you go, we have a keyframe and you can right click on that. And then over here, you can pick a sprite, for example, the dead sprite one, and you can save that. So when you save it, and this is not what I want, so save it, if I preview it, let me see, do we see it actually? For some reason we don't, so let me just do this. I am going to close it, go back over here and open it. And now we see it. Now you can also do it like this. You can go over here and click. So you can move this handle over here to go at the last frame. And then you can click on add a new frame. So now we have a new frame and again, a new frame, a new frame, a new frame. So you can do it like this as well. And let me just delete these so we can delete them all because you can also drag and drop them. So delete, delete, save. You can also move this over here. And then from here, from your sprites, you can then drop your sprites. So for example, you can drop this one over here or simply over here in the frames to create an animation. You can drop one, then the second, then the third, then so on and so forth. Or over here, add a new keyframe and you can click here and pick a dead sprite one image, add a new keyframe, right click, pick new sprite, let's dead to sprite image. And let me just save that. So when I preview it, you see automatically the animation is being played. So it's a simple, it's very simple. It's not complicated. Again, if something is not clear, make sure that you ask in the comment below, but basically you'd simply right click, add keyframes or click here to add keyframes. And then on those keyframes, you right click and select the sprites you want so that you can create the full animation. This is what we did over here, or I already prepared this so that we don't have to do it, but I explained right now how it is done. And if I preview it, this is that animation. So we have 11 sprites or 11 frames. And again, paper, flipbook is a way 
to animate sprites in Unreal Engine. So here in the flipbooks, we can, let me just save everything. We can delete this test book because we don't need it anymore. This was just for an example to show you how it works. And you can also delete it from here because we don't have to like, we don't need to keep it over here. Again, if something is not clear about what is a flipbook and how it works, just make sure that you ask in the comment below the video. Let us move on the main part of our game and here in the blueprints we are going to right click create a blueprint class which is going to inherit from the actor and this one is going to be bp underscore main game. And I'm going to drag and drop this bad boy inside of our game. Now, inside of the level that is. And this is, we are going to position it zero, zero, zero for all three axes, but you know, it's not important. It's just some, I don't know, I'm weird like that. I like to, you know, position things. Anyways, this is going to be the main blueprint or the main actor that is going to control, initialize and do everything with our game. Now, before we start programming everything over here in the event begin play, I'm going to remove everything and over here in the variables. First, I'm going to click here and we're going to have snake parts. So snake parts array, not a rat, but it's an array like this. And over here, we are going to search for our snake body part. So here BP snake body part, and I'm going to click here object reference. Now, as I said, this is going to be an array. There are two ways how we can declare an array if you don't know that. So you can click right click on this blue circle over here, or you can click on here. And then from there you can choose. So from here, if I click on, you can see we have a single variable, we have an array, we have a set, we have a map. We are going to click here on array. Or as I said over here, you can right click. So you can right click over here and there you go. So when you see these like these grids over here, if you didn't know that this is now an array. Now moving forward, we are going to click on the plus button. We're going to have over here direction Z. And this one is going to be an integer and click on the plus button. Again, this is going to be direction X. There you go. So compile and save that now direction Z and direction X. They are not going to have any default values. So they are going to have default values of zero moving forward. I'm going to click here on a new variable. We're going to say can change direction. This is going to determine if we can change the direction with the snake or not. So compile and save that. Moving forward, we are going to have x underscore max. And this one is going to be a float. And by default, I'm going to set the value of it to be 1200 and click on the plus again. And we're going to have Z underscore max. Make sure that you compile and save that. And for the Z, the maximum is going to be 1000. So for the X max or X maximum, 1200. For the Z max, it is going to be 1000. Moving forward, I'm going to click here and we're going to have a food actor reference. So food actor REF. And from here, I am going to search for food and we want the BP food and we want the object reference compile and save that. Moving forward, we are going to have our wall blocks array, which not again, a rat. What is, what is wrong with me with the a rat? It's an array, not an a rat. Anyways, this is going to be our BP block. So from here, click and search or filter for the block. So this is what we want, BP block. And just to be sure, BP underscore block, here you go. Select the object reference and make it an array. So we want the wall blocks to be an array. Moving forward, click on the plus button over here to add a new variable. And this one is going to be delay, not the al I what I wrote over here, a delay variable, which is going to be a float. So from here we have a float. Let me just compile this so that I can add a default value over here. So the default value is going to be 0.2. Compile and save that. Moving forward, we are going to have another one, which is going to be is dead. And of course you can assume this is a Boolean because it is going to determine if the snake is dead or not. 
Next, we are going to have the HUD REF or the reference to our HUD, which is going to be our game HUD. So over here, simply filter for HUD. And this is what we want, BP UI HUD. And this is the one that we want, which is the one that we have created. So compile and save that. Moving forward, last but not least, we are going to have the score, which is going to be an integer. So make sure that you compile and save that as well. So this was the preparation for our main game blueprint, which is going to control our game. As you can see over here, we have all the variables for the snake parts. We are going to store the snake parts that we create because you know the snake eats a gem or eats a fruit or whatever in the game and then it grows. Whenever we eat a new item, we need to make the snake larger. Those parts are going to be stored inside of this array. Direction Z and X, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's the direction where the snake is going. Can change direction. Can we, you know, change the direction? Self-explanatory. X maximum, Z maximum. These are the speeds for the X and the Z. We will see later on how we're going to use that. Food, actor, reference, self-explanatory. Wall blocks. These are the walls that we are going to, you know, create like this in the game to strict the movement of the snake. So this is the reference where we are going to put them. The delay is going to be the speed of the snake. We will see later on how we can increase it. Is that self-explanatory HUD, self-explanatory score, self explanatory and I don't think that you know we need to explain that. Moving forward here in the event graph first we are going to right click and create a custom event and this custom event is going to be called spawn new snake part which is going to do what the title says or its name says it's going to spawn a new snake part. Now we are going to have two parameters so click this new parameter here under input two times one two so over here, the first parameter is going to be our spawn location. And the second parameter is going to be is head. For the spawn location, it is going to be a vector because vectors represent a location X, Y, and Z. Next, what we are going to do is from here, I'm going to say spawn actor from class. And the actor that I'm going to spawn over here, we are going to select the class. We are going to say snake body part. There you go. Now here we are going to have the spawn transform and we have here the location. So what we need to do is right click on the spawn transform and split struct pin so that now we have the spawn transform location and I can plug this into the location. We are not going to touch the transform rotation and scale and so on and so forth. Over here, collision handling override specifies how to handle collisions at the spawn point. Basically, we are going to click on the drop down list and we are going to say spawn always or always spawn ignore collision. So we don't we don't care if there are any collisions at the space or the spot where we are going to spawn our snake. Now moving forward, we are going to drag from here from the head, we are going to say select like this. And you want this one over here, you see this one that has this over here, this like yellowish icon. So that's the one that you want. So I'm going to do it again, select and here you go. This is the one that we want. I'm also going to double click here on the pin so that I can, you know, restructure it like this. I can make this a little bit clearer. It is better. It looks a little bit better. And we are going to do it like this. So there you go. So what we are going to do on these pin structures is that we are going to based on what's going to happen over here. So based on the value if it's true or if it's false. I am going to let me just see it like this. So over here, let me just compile and save that. So this is okay. What we need to do over here is first drag from the drag from the paper flip book. And for some reason, the target over here needs to have it. So we're going to get the paper flip book. 
Let me just see it over here. Here it is. The paper flip book from the return value, which is basically, let me just go over here in the snake body part. This is that paper flip book. So we are going to get that paper flip book and we are going to, from here, we're going to say set flip book. There you go. And we are going to set this, the return value, we are going to plug it in over here. As soon as we plug it in, as soon as this value is plugged in over here, the true and the false will automatically give us, it will give us an option to select a paper flip book. So I'm going to plug this in, there you go, bam, you see, right there. And let me just move this here. There you go, this goes over here, like that. So if the is head, if it's false, we are going to select the yellow square flip book. So this is the one that we want. If it's true, we are going to select the red square flip book and we are going to compile and save that. So again, if it's false, we are going to select the yellow square flip book. So yellow square flip book. If it's true, we are going to select the red square flip book. So if it's a head, it's going to be represented with red. And this is what we are going to do. Now the next part or the next step that we are going to do is after we set the flip book, we are going to get the snake parts array and we are going to from here create a node and we're going to say add, which is going to add to this it is going to add to this array. Now we need to add a new element. The new element is going to be the returning value over here that we have created from our spawn snake body part. So I'm going to take this return value and plug it in over here. But before that, I am also going to double click on that node and move it like this and double click on the node again so that I can, you see it so that I can create like this. And now we see that it goes, the node goes from here to here and then goes over here to add it into the snake parts array, which is what we want. Now, the next step that we are going to do is from here, from this one, we are going to say set is head and that goes over here. And again, I'm going to double click on the node just so that it is more visual, visually clear what we are doing. And here is head, we're going to plug in this one. And again, I am going to double click on this node and move it over here like this so that we can clearly see this goes from here is head and then we're going to plug it in over here and then it goes from here over here and we're going to plug it in and set it to denote if it's a head or not. So now moving forward, we are again gonna drag from this node, which is again the snake body part that we have created because now we are going to set the actor rotation for the snake body part. This goes over here and I'm going to double click again on the node itself. This goes over here and in order to set the rotation for our snake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a random integer and this random integer is going to have maximum of three because over here, if I hover over returns and uniformly distributed random number between zero and maximum minus one. So we can get, well, as you can see, so zero and maximum minus one. What we are going to do over here is we are going to plug this into a select and there you go. So we have now the select over here. I am going to add two more pins. So we have option zero, one, two, and three. And option one, first things first, I'm going to split the pin structure here for the rotation. So split struct pin. And we are going to plug in the return value over here inside of the Y for the pitch. And when we do that, automatically these options are going to convert into integer or actually float values. So when I plug it in, bam, they have converted into float values. When we have option one, we're going to say zero. When we have option two, we are going to say 90 degrees. Option, actually option zero, option one is 90. Option two is 180 and option three is 270. And we are going to compile and save that. And if you're wondering why I added option three, well, maybe you decide to later on add here maximum for four and there you go. So compile and save that. This is going to be our spawn new snake and I'm going to put it in a comment, right click, create a comment from section. I'm going to say over here, spawn new snake part. There you go. Compile and save that. 
Next, we want to spawn our food. And in order to spawn the food, the first thing that we are going to do is this. We are going to get our X maximum and we're going to get our Z maximum. We're going to put them over here. Now, what's gonna happen is for the X maximum, I'm going to say minus float. And the float that I'm going to subtract it or subtract from it is going to be 100. So 100. Next, what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to multiply this with a float. So I'm going to multiply this with a float. The float that I'm going to use to multiply is going to be negative one. And the reason for that is because you see subtraction A minus B. The return value over here is actually the result from this. So I'm going to multiply the result with negative one because I am going to use over here a random a random float in range and the minimum is going to be this value multiplied by negative one.